Let's do that, shall we? Let's do that and that. No, let's not do that. Good evening, Governor. Welcome. Welcome. Can you hear me okay? Hopefully. Need to get a hang of this doing that live thing if I want to start doing regularly. I was going to put some music on, at least until I started to read some stories. There we go. Ambience. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Ambience music, music, rings. Uh, nope. Here we go. Sure, we'll just do this. All right. Okay, good. What's up? What's going on? How are y'all doing tonight? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna read some some stories here soon. Gonna give it a couple minutes to get a couple people in here, and then I'll start reading just so I can knock this out. There's quite a few of them. How are you doing? Just dropping by to say hi. Can't stay. It's getting late where I live, but going to sleep soon. I appreciate that, McLean. Hopefully this episode will be good too. There's going to be some good stories within this one as well. So, what time is it? Eight twelve here. So, I give it. I'm going to give it like ten minutes, if that, and then I'm going to start reading stories. It's a me, Mario. All right, I'm going to get them all. Locked and loaded here, so you don't have to listen to me do that. No, not that. Yep. That. Didn't do that. Okay, there we go. Good. Yes. Oh, yes. Time for a cold one. And by cold one, I'm drinking water. So it's going to get pretty wild. Luckily, I don't have to drive home. Is it Monday? Everybody have a good Monday. Do anything exciting, you know? Get wet and wild on a Monday. My Monday was pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Um, all right. That one, and then let's get this. Let's do this here. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Oof. Folding laundry. I hate folding laundry. I can very easily start laundry, put it in the washer, and exchange it from the washer to the dryer, and not have any issues. You know, that's that's the best part about doing laundry. But then when it comes time to folding it, it sits either in the dryer for an extended period of time or moves from the dryer to the laundry basket and then just sits there for another extended period of time. Sometimes I'll even fold it and have no problem folding it, and then it just all stay folded and sits in the laundry basket and never actually moves itself to the drawers or back in the closet. It just gets pulled from there. So I'll just come down every morning, 
grab from there and just go instead of putting it away. Usually, I'll usually do it like, you know, once every like two or three months. Oof, what was that? That scared me. Scared me, scared me. You have to go to the laundry. You have to do laundry at the laundromat and then take it home. So I don't. Um, I. That sounds like a nightmare to me. I'm not gonna lie. But there's other. They're better. There's better people than me that can do that. Cause I, I would not be able to handle that. Do you actually have to? You have to stay the whole time, or do you get to drop it off and then come back, or do you not trust people enough to do that? Um, let's see here. I don't know what that noise was. It scared the shit out of me, though. It was just me. Um. <laughs> yeah, it did scare the shit out of me. Oh, uh, that was funny. Close. Okay. Yeah. All right. What time is it? Um, eight sixteen. Okay, we're good. Aaron Rodgers, oh, football. I'm gonna be honest. I know next to nothing. I, I can name you all the football teams and probably the quarterback, quarterbacks, quarterbacks, and that's about the extent of it. I watch UFC pretty regularly and college basketball, and that is my extent of sports knowledge. Oh, Monday night football. I got tons of friends that are super into it, though. And then usually whenever they start talking about it, I stop listening because I have nothing. I, No offense, you know, I just have nothing to contribute. I usually would go, I'll go to Super Bowl parties to listen, or not to listen, but to eat the food, because the food's always dope. You know? I'm going to put this over here. Oh, that's such a good idea. Look at me making all these good ideas up. Um, travel. Stories. One. It is story time. I'm just going to, whoa, what the hell? It is story time, mate. Uh, hello from London, Leslie. Hello from the United States of America. Where, I don't even know what I was going to say. I was going to try to come up with something cheeky, but it didn't come to me. Give it time. Give it time. All right, what time is it? All right, I'm going to give it another couple minutes, and then I'm going to start reading stories. I'm going to get them, I'm going to start getting them together right now, and then we should be, should be good to go, mate. All right, no, I'm not going to put, not going to do that one. Let's do, nope. That one. All right. All right. I did. Well, I didn't. I didn't watch the Strickland versus Izzy fight. I uh, I was actually out with a couple of my friends, and I didn't feel like spending seventy dollars on it if nobody else was going to be into it. But I did put some money on it. I put four hundred dollars on Strickland and won a good amount of money. Everybody was making fun of me for putting that much down, but uh, who's laughing now? Me. Hee haw. 
218 hole oh my goodness you are a trooper you are a trooper i uh i would not be awake at 218 i have not seen 218 a.m in a long time i might see it when i wake up to go pee but that's about it oh man yeah that was a good payout man that was definitely the most the most uh money i've won on DraftKings thus far. Usually, usually I just put it where the money is, obviously. But honestly, I was putting that money down thinking that uh, I was going to lose it. But I didn't. I was really, I think, I mean, I wasn't the only one. I think everybody damn near the whole world was shocked when Strickland knocked him out. Or at least they called it, whatever you want to call it. Definitely wasn't expecting that. I met you in Horrors Live. Thought I'd check you out for a minute. Yeah, check me out. Funk Show Brother, right about now. Yeah, Horrors a solid dude. Solid dude. I like that guy. Nice enough to let me come on one of those lives and annoy him and all the viewers a little bit, you know? So, now I can annoy you too. Um... Let's do this one, get that one, and this one. All right. Nope. Back. Get back. Back. Of course, it's being all wonky now. Sort. Top. Uh, Chaos on translate. Oof. Let's do this one. Okay. Lady, what's up? What's going on? Thanks for stopping, boy. I'm about to start reading some stories, and I think I think this is gonna be a regular thing. Monday nights for me is gonna be where I do live streams and record uh stories for tomorrow uh and then drop the episodes on Tuesdays there might be some weeks where I actually put out two episodes those are probably gonna be few and far between that's why I'm trying to make each episode like an hour long so you get plenty of content enough at least for the week or at least a couple of days get your fix then go on to the next I'm sure every single one of you listens to tons and tons of other narrators uh I mean when I listen to these stories and stuff like that more consecutively before I even started my channel there was tons of narrators that I listened to so I'm sure you do too so an hour is enough of me, you know, to listen to me yammer on. So, um, but if you really want more than that, go check out Chilling because I got I just put up a bunch of stories on there. Bunch, bunch of them. There's hours and hours of them up there. <laughs> nice. All right, you guys ready for some travel and what is travel and vacation stories? Yeah, that's what I that's what I said. Let me get this, get this good. Well, that that'll probably that's a good one. Get okay. No, go back, go back. Um, where did that go? All right, there we go. All right, let's do it. Now, if you hear this noise, that's my little clicker that I use to uh, click whenever I make a mistake so that I can go back and it makes the editing process a hell of a lot easier and faster. So if you hear that noise, that's what that is. And don't don't think you're going crazy or something like that or whatever. Just so you know, FYI. All right, let me get this up and make sure this is good to go. And yep, yeah, that's good. All right. Yes, 
dog training clicker. Derek, the old, the old Derek Weber is the one who showed me this. And ever since he did, it has been life changing for me on the editing side because I was at the point where I was probably going to hire somebody to edit my stories because editing is mind numbingly freaking boring and I can't stand it, especially when you start putting out a lot of content. It's just, oh man, it's rough. But this has made it literally cut it in half, 50%, if not even less than that sometimes. So this has been a, uh, a godsend. So I thank that dude for the recommendation all the time. Hey, yo, what's up, man? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of mistakes. Uh, that's probably why I hate editing so much is because of how many mistakes I make and mouth clicks where I mispronounce a word and then have to go back. So this is, uh, yeah, this thing is amazing. Amazing. What the, what is that noise? I'm the second time I've heard it now. Why is it doing that? Why are you doing that, mate? No, thanks. Oh... It's okay. Oh my god. I'm dumb. Okay, I got it. I didn't realize that that was my the noise that it made. I thought I had said it to something else. That's why I'm like, what the freaking yeah, I just like jump scared the shit out of me. That's the second time now. I don't see anything though. It didn't say you got a subscriber or anything. Um, hang on. Hold the phone. Yeah, I don't see anything, but. Oh, well. Oh, well. Okay. Ready? You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. First story is 13 year old me could have been murdered on my family vacation. In the mid-90s, my parents took my older brother and me on vacation to Cancun, Mexico, when we were teenagers. I was 13 and my brother was 18. My brother and I shared a room. He was an old... My brother and I shared a room. He was old enough to go out with the bars. With the bars? Oh my gosh. No. No, we're just going to go back on that one. That's the other fun part about this is sometimes I read, obviously, what I'm reading, and then people will misspell something on there, and then you read it like that, and that creates a lot more work, too. Brian, for the five, thank you so much, Brotato. You didn't have to do that. I'm going to take that $5, and I'm going to spend it on language lessons so i can read better i'm gonna start start a go fund me for that or maybe i'll just go buy hot pockets let's go, go. When, when we were, we were teenagers, teenagers 13, 13 and my, my brother, brother was 18. 18. okay we're gonna start right there oh hi there my brother was 18. okay my brother and i shared a room all right ready brian again thanks for the five brothers 18. 18. my brother and i shared a room he was old enough to go out to the bars, leaving me alone in the room to watch movies and be bored out of my mind. My parents wanted to hang out with us the whole time, but we were too cool and tried to distance ourselves from them as much as we possibly could. I was mature for my age. I had previously had some underage drinks with my friends and felt that I was old enough and cool enough to go to the downtown bars of Cancun. When I asked my brother if I could join him, he laughed at me and told my parents. So I was really bitter that I had to stick back in the room, or worse, forced to hang out with my folks. So the third or fourth day into our vacation, I was sitting at one of the hotel bars, nursing a Shirley Temple, feeling sorry for myself. A woman, nicely dressed in her mid to late 20s, sat down next to me and we started chatting. Ugh. I don't remember the details of what we talked about. I just remember her being really interested in what I had to say. And she made me feel like I was really mature for my age. 
what 13-year-old me would have craved. We made arrangements to meet at the Rose... Rose. We then made arrangements to meet at the resort bar and hang out the next day some more. No, I'm going back on that. We made a 13-year-old me would have craved. Brother couldn't hook it up. I know, right? Well, I, I got to be honest. I have a younger sister, five years younger than me. An 18-year-old me wouldn't be caught dead with 13-year-old, my 13-year-old sister. I was, a, I was an asshole when I was that age, so uh, I can relate to that. And uh, now, couldn't have a better relationship with her, but 18-year-old uh, me, I was very similar to this guy. I was too cool to hang out with my younger sister. Um, oh, there we are. There we are. Girl me would have craved. We made arrangements to meet at the resort bar the next day to hang out some more. So the next day comes. We meet in the resort lounge at lunchtime and hung out. She listened to my stories about how BS it was that I couldn't go out drinking, sympathizing with me. She then offered to get me alcoholic drinks. After three to four drinks, I was getting pretty drunk. And this was when she asked me if I wanted to go back to room. Okay. After three or four drinks, I was getting pretty drunk. And this was when she asked me if I wanted to go back to the room with her and hang out and watch a movie. Drunk 13-year-old me thought this was a great idea. As I was going to get some more booze and this cool 20-something chick wanted to hang out with me. I thought I was super cool. Just as we were... Just as we were leaving the lounge, my mom appeared. She was meeting my dad at the pool. My mom, who didn't know what was going on, thinks I'm heading to my road. My mom doesn't know what's going on and thinks I'm heading to my hotel room. Drunk me proudly introduces my new friend to my mom, telling her that we're going back to this woman's room to watch a movie. My mom's face goes from, hi, how's it going, to... Get your ass up to your room right now. Mom tells the my new friend that she has no business inviting a 13-year-old back to her room and that she is not going to talk to me again or she'll call the police. At that moment, I was so angry with my mom, but she had that don't mess with me look. At that moment, I was so angry with my mom, but she had that don't mess with me look, so I knew I had to just keep my mouth shut. The next day I was heading out to the pool and saw that woman sitting at the bar with two men in their late 50s, who I can only describe as menacingly scary. And we're doing that again. The next day I was heading out to the pool and saw that woman sitting at the bar with two men in their late 50s, who I can only describe as menacingly scary. She pointed at me, and one of the men glared while the other one winked at me. It sent shivers down my spine. I was thinking he was 18 and his brother was 21. <sighs> his dreams have come true. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. I, I don't know. I haven't been to, I've never been to, have I been to Cancun? Yeah, I guess I did go to, I did go to Cancun in like 2018 on a cruise with my family and stuff like that. Cause it was when you're 18, in Cancun, you can legally drink. So we went down there for after I graduated high school, and it was really, really fun. I mean, don't have a story like this to share, though. Uh, that's for damn sure. Okay. Mm have I ever been to Canada? I have not. Um, I've been to a lot of places around the world, especially obviously in the States as well, but never been to Canada. I'd like to. I've heard it's freaking beautiful there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had to think about it for a second because those I couldn't remember. Sometimes those cruises go to like Jamaica or Mexico or, you know, and we only saw like the... I don't even remember. It was Cancun, but it was like a resort type of place, you know, like we didn't get like actually go 
and you only they only give you like eight hours to or something like that if i remember correctly to like get off the boat and you have to be back by eight hours or in eight hours to get back on the ship or it'll leave you so yeah and most of it was spent drinking obviously as an 18 year old kid so Oregon. I don't have I been to Oregon? I don't think so. I haven't been to Oregon. A lot of these places that I've seen, at least outside of the US, was all because of the army. Like flying into and stuff like that. So I didn't really get to experience many of the countries. I just saw a lot of the airports or the the shitty parts of countries and stuff like that too. I imagine people probably get left more often than you think. Hell, I know there's stories in the news about like people falling overboard and stuff like that too, you know, like that's scary as shit because I think a lot of the time they can't, I don't, it's got to take forever for a cruise ship to like stop and turn around and stuff like that too. I feel like there's a lot of cases where they literally have to like call the coast guard. And yes, I definitely still drink. Absolutely love to drink, but I definitely don't do it like I used to. Can't hang. Uh, I, but I would also probably have called myself a borderline alcoholic at one point in time, so it's probably a good thing that I don't drink like I used to. I pretty much, I had to like, I had to start sticking to drinking beers now. Um, I had to, I still drink hard alcohol on occasion and stuff like that, but I, I pretty much had to walk away from whiskey. As I absolutely loved whiskey and that's all I ever drank and it turns me into an idiot. So not so much anymore. No. Taken. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'd probably be um, pretty, I don't know, it doesn't sound like a, a too awful of a thing to get left behind in a tropical paradise, right? Joe, what's up? Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I, I, I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. I'll probably say it more times throughout the stream, but I'm going to start making this a regular thing on Monday nights is recording. Recording stories for the following day, kind of like Joel does, you know, taking another one of the many tricks and trades or whatever you want to call it from Joel, because I, uh, he's got it down to a science. He knows what he's doing. He's kind of like one of the the forefathers of uh, scary stories, at least in this niche. So, taking a page out of his book and probably gonna start doing this on on Monday nights. And he doesn't. I don't think he live streams on Monday, so it's not gonna take away from. From him or me or whatever you want to call it to. You know, you know, you know, you know. Uh, do I do snories on Snapchat? I do not. I do not have a Snapchat. Um, it's not really my thing. Uh, I do have a dude that's going to be running my TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff, though, and posting stories, short form content on there for me. So. Uh, that is something that's out there, but that's, that's about the extent of it. Scully, what's going on, Jeff? Hiya, hiya right back. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by all y'all. Okay, ready for another story? This one looks like a trucker story. Um, let me get this going over here. All right. Disturbing travelers. I'm a long haul trucker. I see and deal with a lot of weird and scary stuff. I was traveling up US 93 in Nevada, heading to Portland for a delivery. It was around 1.30 in the morning and I needed to stop and log my half hour break. I found a wide spot and pulled off. I did my logs and then made myself a sandwich. While I was eating said sandwich, I noticed a vehicle pulling behind me. I didn't get too concerned about it, but kept one eye on it while I ate. Then it got kind of strange. I noticed a figure in the headlight of the vehicle approach the back, driver's side of my trailer, stop, and looked like he or she was rubbing the back or side of my trailer with their hand. Suspicious, for sure. 
I got my pistol out of my lockbox, cocked it, and loaded it. Slid it behind my waistband. Then proceeded to climb out of my rig. I was walking about 10 feet back. I kept my hand on the butt of the pistol. Flicked my flashlight on and aimed it at the person. It was a man. Weird looking fellow in a dirty whitish trench coat. Long straggly hair and bald on top. He was rubbing something on the side of my trailer. I hollered at him to stop what he was doing. He looked up at me and smirked. And without turning his gaze off of me, started walking toward me. I backed my way to the door, keeping my hand on the pistol but not pulling it out yet. I didn't feel like my life was in danger at that moment. I opened up my door and climbed back into my rig. I shut the door and then locked it. The dude walks up to my door, looks at me. The dude walked up to my door, looks up at me, still smirking. This dude is off his rocker. I'm thinking my half hour break is definitely over and it's time to go. Um, what does that say? However, I'm looking down at him, getting ready to turn the key. I feel my truck rock. I jump and look over my driver's side mirror. Nothing. I look over to my passenger side mirror. And there on my step... Face pressed to the passenger side window is a freaky, perfect replica. Oh my gosh. I'm going back. Well, it's fine. It's definitely, definitely over, and it's, over and it's time, time to, go. to go. I'm going back to that because that was weird the way that's written. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I keep picturing you clicking a giant joke size pen. Uh, are you talking about those ones that are, um, you remember those ones that are like the giant thick ones that have like all the different kind of colors wrapped around it and you push down whichever color pen you want? Okay, it's, it's time, time to, to go. go. Okay, time to go. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. However, I'm looking down at him and getting ready to turn the key. I feel my truck rock. I jump and look at my driver's side mirror. Nothing. I look over and check my passenger side mirror. And there, on my step, face pressed to my passenger side window, is a freaky, perfect replica of an old witch, smiling with rotten teeth, cocking her head left and then right, fogging up my window. Needless to say, I about sucked my seat up my ass. And that's not the end of it. Oh no. The dude then jumps up on my driver's side step, proceeds to start licking my window. Then the witch lady starts smacking my window with the palm of her hand, over and over. Then the dude starts telling me to open up my door. Hey boy, open up. Come on now, open up. We're friendly. What you got in this trailer of yours? Anything good? Open up, boy. Now I feel threatened. I pull my pistol out, and the chick immediately disappears off my passenger side step. The dude laughs, then jumps down and jumps off my step. Just grins, touches fingers to his nose, then jumps off my step again. I fired my truck up and took the hell off. Never did see any headlights following me, thank God. So to those disturbing travelers, yeah. Let's not meet again. Uh, all right, there we go. Damn, those are both really short. My ghost reminds me of the fan. Oh. I'm watching on my TV. What is all that clicking? Samantha, uh, you must not have been here earlier, but uh, clicking is what I use to edit with. When I make a mistake, I click this dog. Um, it's like a dog trainer type of thing. Here. When I make a mistake, and like when I'm looking at the, uh, whatever you call it, the, the waves when I'm editing, there's these giant plumes that come up anytime I click that and I can just immediately zoom in and it makes my editing process like 
50%, you know, like cuts it in 50% in half. It makes it a hell of a lot easier. So, but yeah, obviously you won't hear this if you listen to the actual episode tomorrow, but you're just listening live and you're going to, if you, if you check out any of the live sessions like you do on, or you will on Mondays when I start doing this, you got 150% chance like this is, I'm going to do it like I do the weather channel. Okay. There's 150% chance on Monday nights of clicking. Click, clack, click, clack. Okay. Next story. Shall we? Where's those one? There's some good ones over here. No, 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 no. Um, where'd that go? Where'd it go? Okay. Um. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Clicking is for noobs. Amy, you're a freaky noob. You are a noob. Just for that. Eat it. Eat it, Stanley. Travel stories. Three. Are right, you ready for another story? This one's called, how many times can I click this for the next five minutes? You guys ready? See how long, see how long it takes you guys to click off this live stream. I'll click this for five minutes straight and not say anything else. Okay. Sound good. Sorry, I had to drink, drink a water. Okay. This one is chaos on a transatlantic flight. This was a very long time ago, so the timeline might be a little bit off and the details are fuzzy, but I've written it out exactly as I recall it. In the early 2000s, my family was living in Europe. And in December of 2001, we were coming back home to Latin America for a Christmas vacation. My brother and I, who were both in high school at the time, my dad, my fl- Whoa, whoa, we are, wa wa we were. Sometimes I just need to not read the stuff that's in parentheses because it always just throws me off. High school, high school at the time. time. Back, back home, home to Latin, Latin America, America for a Christmas, Christmas vacation. vacation. Okay. All right, Peter. My brother and I right there. My brother and I and my dad were flying together from Paris to Miami. My dad was seated in business class while my brother and I were in coach, sitting in the middle two seats in the middle row. The flight was pretty normal at first. Absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. About four or five hours into the flight, I was reading a book, almost dozing off when I heard a woman start to read the book. <sighs> About four or five hours into the flight, I was reading a book, almost dozing off when I heard a woman start to repeat the word no, over and over. At first it was really quiet, almost inaudible, but it quickly got very loud and urgent. Before I realized what was happening, she was screaming no, 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 at the top of her lungs. I looked up and saw a flight attendant a few rows ahead of me to the right, hunched over someone sitting in the window seat. My first thought was that the passenger was having a heart attack or a catastrophic health problem, but her yelling was so unsettling that that couldn't be it. There was a strangely long delay in people's relax... Nope, going back on. Relaxins. Two forty. Oh, 
8.49 p.m. in Canada. It is 8.49 in where I'm at, too. Um, that, that couldn't be it. it. That couldn't be it was the last thing I said. That couldn't be it. There was a... Okay. It was so, so unsettling. unsettling. That, that couldn't, couldn't be it. it. There's a strangely long delay in police. Oh, no. <laughs> I fucking did it again. Yeah. Okay. There's a strange long delay in police. Oh my god, I did it again. Police. <laughs> I said police. <laughs> oh, the one settling. That, that couldn't be it. Uh. That couldn't be it. And also, if you hear me, like an echo of me talking, that's just me re-listening to the story so I can figure out where I'm at in my uh, editing process. Um, that couldn't be it. Okay. There's a strange long delay in p people's reaction. Nobody did anything. I completely panicked and froze in my seat. My brother, on the other hand, jumped out of his seat, jumped over the person sitting next to him, and ran up to see what was going on. He was up there in a matter of seconds, and as he approached, suddenly everyone around us stood up to see what was going on and or to try to help. She kept screaming over and over. She was struggling with this passenger. He was really tall, so tall that his whole head was visible over the back of the seat. He had very long black curly hair my brother came over to my row my brother came back to our row and said something is wrong before going back up to get a closer look passengers close to her began struggling with the guy as well a bunch of people jumped on him and started pulling at him someone in the row behind him even pulled his hair back so hard his face jerked towards the top of the plane he let out a really loud moan or scream, and then it was chaos. The aisles were so crowded no one could move. I saw a fire extingu- The aisles were so crowded nobody could move, and I saw a fire extinguisher being passed hand to hand to the back of the plane. I immediately thought that there was a fire and that we were all going to die. It was an incredibly hopeless sensation to know that there's nowhere to run and no way to escape the situation unfolding right in front of you. They passed the extinguisher all the way up to a male flight attendant, near that guy. The flight attendant hit him with the butt of the extinguisher really hard on the face. They started asking for belts, headphones, straps, etc. Anything they could do to restrain him. My brother took off his belt and gave it to them. They wrapped everything they could around that passenger's arms, shoulders, and torso securing him to that seat. I saw the male flight attendant who had hit him with an extinguisher. No. I saw the male flight attendant who had hit him with a fire extinguisher carry a pair of large black tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. <laughs> oh, God damn it. To, to that seat. seat. Bring, Bring him, him to, to that, that seat. seat. Securing him to that seat. <sighs> We are the weirdos. Yeah, you all are weirdos. You're weirdos. Especially you, Amy. Especially you. Um, Bring, bring him, him to, to that, that seat. seat. Oh my god. That scared the shit out of me, bro. For doing that. Makes me jump. Um, Alright. Wait. Securing him to that seat. I saw the male flight attendant who had hit him with the fire extinguisher carry a large black tennis shoe to the back of the plane, which at the time seemed kind of strange, and I really didn't think much of it. The flight attendants asked if there was a doctor on board to sedate the man. People kept asking if there was a flight marshal on board too, but nobody came forward. I can't remember exactly how or when things calmed down, but eventually everyone was told to return to their seats. A small group of the people that had helped restrain the man were asked to keep guard on a rotation. 
there were always at least a few people sitting behind him or next to him, keeping an eye on him the entire time. I think there was even someone behind him holding a fistful of his hair for the rest of the flight. The pilot announced over the PA system that there had been a security breach. I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was vague, and that we were being diverted to Boston Logan Airport. He said they didn't know if the person was working alone, so get to know your neighbor. We were in the middle of the Atlantic, with maybe four more hours to go before we landed. Things were a bit ominous and tense, but for the most part, everyone was friendly and in a pretty good mood. Nobody really knew exactly what had happened. We weren't allowed to get up from our seats either. If you had to use the bathroom, you needed to call a flight attendant to escort you to the lavatory, or you weren't allowed to lock the door. Wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. Mm, let's go back there. We weren't, we weren't allowed, allowed to get, get up, up from, from our seats, seats either. Nobody, Nobody really knew exactly what had happened. happened. Nobody knew exactly what had happened. Okay. Um, it's, it's a saying, the live by babes. That, what does that even mean? What does that even mean? Okay. We weren't allowed to get up from our seats. If you had to use the bathroom, you needed to call a flight attendant to escort you to the bathroom where you weren't allowed to lock the door either. I remember a grumpy old French man with a few rum... I remember a grumpy old man in a few rows from us who got really annoyed after a while and kept getting up without permission just to annoy the flight attendants. They were not happy. After a while, they put on the movie Legally Blonde to distract everyone. My brother and I went up to business class to talk to my father. Apparently, they didn't hear the extent of the chaos back in coach. They were all going on about business as usual. A few hours later, as we approached the U.S., we saw fighter jets outside the window on both sides of the plane. The pilot announced that they were escorting us back to Boston. A few little kids got really excited watching those jets. I learned later that these are the last resort security measure to prevent hijacked planes from repeating 9-11 style attacks. They were supposed to shoot us down in case of a major threat. We landed and were told to stay seated. A SWAT team came on board carrying assault rifles and a ton of body armor, cut off all the guy's restraints, and took him off the plane. I saw everything in detail, since we were seated only a few seats behind him. We were parked in the middle of the tarmac for a long time before we were allowed to disembark. I remember seeing pieces of my brother's belt on the guy's seat as we left, and thought about taking one as a souvenir, but thought better of it. We were escorted to a baggage claim area in the Boston Logan Airport that was surrounded by a large metal fence to keep us all in one place. We were there for what felt like three or four hours, just waiting anxiously. No one would explain anything to us. Passengers were getting really agitated, shaking the metal fences and yelling at the airport personnel that this was inhumane treatment. There's no food, nowhere to sit. Children were crying. Dozens of people were trying to sleep on the baggage carousel. They finally ordered a bunch of pizzas and led us into the waiting area with actual chairs, where each passenger was an air where each passenger was interrogated by the FBI. They were astonishingly unfriendly. I guess they were trying to discern if the guy had any partners on board. They then shuttled us back to our baggage, where security officers thoroughly hand-searched every single passenger's shoes. They then shuttled us back to our baggage, where security officers thoroughly hand-searched every single passenger's shoe, suitcase, and carry-on bags, and then patted everyone down. We were finally allowed to make a phone call, and I called my mom. The rest of the family was completely hysterical. They'd been watching the news all day, and knew that an Islamic extremist, extremist, they'd been watching the news all day, and knew that an Islamic extremist 
had tried to blow up our flight with a bomb that he'd smuggled on board inside his shoe. We had absolutely no idea what had really happened until this moment, as we were kept completely in the dark. It was a very strange sensation up until this point. It was a very strange sensation. Up until this point, my dad, brother, and I had actually remained pretty relaxed considering the circumstances. We were more annoyed about the inconvenient changes to our travel itinerary than the crazy experience on that plane. We had no ob- We had no idea how bad the security breach really was, how close we came to being killed. After about 12 hours in Boston, we were put on another flight home. My brother made the mistake of giving a few interviews to CNN and other networks while we were in Boston. So when we landed in our small country, he was immediately swarmed by the press and gave a bunch of interviews despite being exhausted. I was happy to finally sit and relax with my family at the longest I was happy to finally sit and relax with my family after the longest and most stressful trip of my life. We later learned that the bomber, Richard Reed, had actually tried to board the same flight on the previous day. He was detained and questioned by French security because of multiple red flags. He had purchased a one-way ticket, had no luggage. He had no luggage and perched, perched, oh my gosh. I'm just going to go back. Because of multiple multiple red red flags. flags. Multiple red flags. (sighs) <sighs> does it always have to be a multi-click situation? Absolutely, it fucking does. <laughs> because the more I click, the larger the plume is, and so I can see it. And I don't miss it, because if I miss it, then you'll hear it or see it in the episode, and then everybody will complain about it there, too. So, <clears throat> where? Was I? Uh, he, he was, was detained, detained and questioned, questioned by, by French, French security, security because, because of multiple, multiple red flags. flags. Of multiple red flags. Where was that? Lost me place. Oh, there it is. Okay. He had no luggage and purchased no luggage. Oh my gosh. Four red, red flags. flags. He had no luggage and purchased a one-way ticket with cash, causing him to miss the flight. They put him on the next day's flight, put him up in a hotel kind of far from the airport, since everything nearby was booked. The following day it rained, and on the walk from the hotel to the airport, his shoes got wet. This might have been why he had trouble lighting the wick that was inside his shoe. He was planning to light it mid-flight, He waited until the passenger next to him went to the bathroom, then tried to light his shoe with matches. The female flight attendant that first engaged him had smelled the matches and was walking up and down the aisle and was walking up and down the aisle looking for a passenger who she assumed was trying to smoke a cigarette. She saw him with a shoe in his lap and immediately tried to take it from him. They struggled and he bit her hand. Reed is now serving three life terms in prison. (sighs) What the? Okay. That is 10, 13, 16. Okay. Hmm. Oh, so good. What a so tasty. Um, yeah, I feel like I've no, okay, the whole thing. All right, all right, let's see. Smoke on the water. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to eventually, maybe I'll just do a whole live stream where it's nothing but me clicking, doing covers of songs. And probably the first one I'm going to learn, learn is Freebird, you know. Because it's a really short song, so I'll learn how to do that one first. (laughs) 
Yeah, I could do. I could do a Creed one or Sandstorm. You know, all the fan favorites. Okay. Another story, shall we? Shall we do another story? Um, um, if you donate $350, I will take a recommendation. So that's, that's the beginning bid. Whenever I'm doing clicking, you know. Travel stories for... Yeah, you're right. Miss Leah, I know you don't like Creed. You love Creed. You know, nobody likes Creed. Everybody loves Creed. There's just no liking to it, you know? Oh. Aaron, you're not late at all, my friend. It's only been like, what, 30 minutes, I think. And uh, horror over coffee... What's up, bro? How you doing, ma'am? Howdy doody. Look, I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Yeah, I got a lot of great accents. I'm sure everybody from all those places loves it when I recreate accents. Especially, I have a an accent that I do that I read. Um, like, people bitching in the comment section. I have a... <laughs> I have, I have an, their own voice that I do in my head. And even I, I even do it out loud when I'm like laughing at some of the things that people get mad about. And yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's pretty spot on. If I creed, you walk. Well, that's fine. I'll just take you. I'll just take you higher to a place where blind men see. To a place where a blind man see. So let's go there. Put a dick up my butt. Come on, let's go there. Pretty sure those are the lyrics, right? All right. Uh. Okay, another story, or do you want me to just click it? Click it or tick it. <laughs> See those signs everywhere on the interstate? Click it or tick it. <laughs> if you're texting, then who's driving? I saw that then one the other day, and I was like, me. Curtis, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I try. I try. All right. Here's the options. I click for five minutes. I sing renditions of Creed songs and other butt rock songs. Uh, four, I make animal noises into the microphone for another five minutes. Um, another one is I'll just leave. I'll just leave the stream up and then I'll just leave and go to sleep. Or or I can tell a story. Which one sounds sounds the best? The lyrics are <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna leave the stream going. I'm gonna go to sleep. Okay, sound good. You guys can you guys can handle it from here. Actually, you know what? I'll just leave the stream going. I'll go into my other room and then I'll just blast Creed on loop. So let's go there. All right. Where's that other story at, mate? All right. Let me make this one. Travel stories. Five. Uh, 
Okay, on to the next one there, matey. This one is... Could time travel be a natural... Pho- no, that's not what it is. Could time travel be a natural phenomenon? My experience in Washington Cascades Mountains. I've always loved the outdoors. I was fortunate enough to be born in the great Pacific Northwest in western Washington Cascades, to be exact. Exact. Let's just start that one over. Let's just start that one. That was a big mouthful. That's why sometimes I try to read too much in one sitting. And that's exactly what happens. Is... Is... Okay. All right. Take two. Story, stories. I've always loved the outdoors. I was fortunate enough to be born in the great Pacific Northwest in the western Washington Cascades, to be exact. My father and I spent much of my early years of my life exploring the mountains, fishing and hunting. There are parts of the Cascades I know like the back of my hand. One of these places is called Goblin Creek, up in the index off-road to Highway 2. One of those places is called Goblin Creek, up in the index road off Highway 2. When I was a kid, I would drive up there to do some fishing and shooting, but also collect the specific type of rock that when we cut in half and polished it, it would resemble a scenic picture of the view of the mountains from within a cave. I do not recall the true name of these stones. We just called them picture rocks. My father's friend and neighbor owned an art gallery or mineral shop that used to be a church. If you've ever driven up the Stewart... Start up. Okay. If you've ever driven up the startup route on your way from Sultan to Gold Bar on Highway 2, you might remember seeing that robot sculpture outside the shop that my dad built. This is the place that we sold the stone for $2 a pound. It was lucrative. It was lucrative revenue for a preteen. The walk from the creek where we harvested these rocks to the dirt road wasn't really that long, but lengthy enough that you could presumably get lost while en route if one didn't know where to go. In the years that we spent at this creek, I'd only seen two other people out there. One was a game warden that heard gunshots from our target. Is this really a a traveling story? No, it's not. It's, it's could travel, could time, I guess time travel technically is travel. No, no, that's not, that's not travel. I was wondering as I'm reading that. Good Lord. Oh Lord. Thank you for wasting my time. Me. <sighs> you didn't pronounce Greek correctly. It's 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 Greek. I'm not from the south. I ain't gonna say no Greek. Crick crack. All right. Where I got hold on, gotta find another story because that one technically isn't a traveling or vacation story, so I know somebody in the comments section like, "Well, number number story number three. Um, when I was listening to it, and um, you you technically said travel one time after you mispronounced sixteen thousand of those words, and I just want to let you know that technically, technically, that's not a travel story. So I just need to let you know that I know I'm never gonna comment on any other other videos. I'm only gonna say negative stuff, but once in a while, like right now, I need to let you know that that's not a travel or vacation story. Okay, bye. Okay, let me let me find another story. Because I'm not gonna do a time travel story. You know, I'm doing I'm doing the the bunny ears right now. Vacation in Paris. Okay, let's do this one. This one doesn't sound too bad. Right. Right. Itchy, itchy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The clicking that you hear is just me smacking my face on the mic when I mess up. Okay. Actually, yeah. Yep, that's what it is. I'm very scared since... No, no, nope, 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 
nope, nope, nope. That's not... Sorry, hold on. I'm proofreading a couple of these because I didn't actually read-read them earlier. And apparently... I don't know. You, you, just, you just know. I, I gotta make sure that they're decent, okay? Alright, so calm down. Calm down, alright? Why not? Alright, let's do this one. Let's do this one, alright, mate. Mountain Dew Redo. Those voodoo that you do. What is it? Voodoo Mama Juju. What are you going to do, do? All right. Ready? This one's not time travel. Okay. So this one's Betty. Betty. This one's better. All right. Possible murder slash serial killer encounter in mine. Not really sure how to begin this, and my title may seem already fucked up. Not really sure how to begin this, and then my title may seem okay. No, it's not okay. It's not just me. This this lady cannot, lady or guy, whoever it is, whoever it is, they, they are not. They can't write. Not really sure how to begin this, and my title make may make more sense after reading my experience. I'll try to be as brief and concise as possible. It was the summer of 2004. My family was supposed to vacation in Kenny Bunkport. Ken Bunkport. I don't better figure out how to pronounce that or somebody will rake me over the coals in the section that comments. Anybody know how to say Ken? I guess I, you can't really help me out, can you? No, nope, I got to look it up myself. Sorry, this is really fun to listen to. I know Ken. Kenny Bunkport. Main pronunciation pronunciation Kennebunkport 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 Put that right there, mate. Yeah, I got it right. Okay, Kennebunkport. Kennebunkport. Kenny bunked my port. Thanks, Kenny. All right. Just gonna... I'm just going to restart it. Wait, no, I'm not, because I'm countering. countering. It's possible. Size is possible. possible. Kenny, get your bunk out of my port. All right. Where was I? That's not it, mate. That's not it. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Okay. All right. This is possible. All right. It was the summer of 2004. My family was supposed to vacation in Kennebunkport, Maine. My father was stuck in meetings, so he was going to come up from Manhattan a few days after us. My mother wanted to drive up, which super annoyed me at the time, but we didn't have much of a choice, so me, my brother, and my sister loaded up into the car and started that drive. I was about 14 at the time of this story. The drive itself was uneventful, but there were various delays and we ended up getting a lot later than we originally planned. Because of this, the owners of the house were renting Because of this, the owners of the house we were renting had turned in for the night, and we weren't able to get a hold of them to get the keys to get inside. It sounds like horrible planning, but apparently they were pretty strict about the time frame to pick up the keys. My mom, who was unfazed, decided that she wanted lobster, so we went to one of her favorite spots. She called my dad to see if he could make us reservations at a hotel. Oh, we have to say that word again. In a book for it. She called my dad to see if he could make us reservations. Reservations. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to go back. I said reservations. 
Range range reservations, reservations at a hotel. hotel. My, my mom. mom. My mom. It's unfazed. Yeah. I don't know how you're still awake right now there, Leslie. It's that's your your wild child. Ain't no way you'd see me at 319 in the AM. My mom, who was unfazed, decided that she wanted lobster, so we all went to one of our favorite spots. She called my dad to see if the, he could make reservations at a hotel in Kennebunkport from New York while we ate. We were just enjoying the lobster while a guy came up and started chatting with my mom. I figured it was just a friendly local making conversation. During this, my dad calls my mom, and my mom excuses herself to speak to him. Apparently, all hotels were booked for the night. Go figure. I hide the vacation season in Kennebunkport. The plan was for us to drive to the nearest town and just find somewhere to stay until we picked up the keys for our vacation home. Apparently, apparently that local had been listening to my mom's conversation and came back over once she got off the phone. I want to say first that there was nothing outwardly off about this guy. He was preppy, clean-cut, unassuming, and fit in with the clientele. He told my mom that he had a big home with a big guest house. We were more than welcome to stay with. His wife wouldn't mind. Immediately, my reaction was like, F that. No way in the world I was staying at a random dude's house in creepy Maine in the dark. My mom, doing her due diligence, determined that this guy was legit. She said... He said he was in finance, and my mom was an investment banker. They chatted long enough for my mom to determine that he wasn't totally full of it. I called my dad hysterical. He said that I was overreacting and that I needed to get out of the city more and just accept that sometimes people are just nice. So my brother, sister, and I got into our car and followed this man back to his house. The guest house was really nice fully furnished, but the beds were oddly placed. The guest house had two bedrooms, and instead of the beds being located in the middle or center, they were right under each window. It just seemed out of place. Anyway, fast forward. We're all getting ready to go to bed, and my mom heard us... Mm, no, I'm going back. Going back, mates. Anyway, fast forward. Well, anyway, fast forward. Hey, hey, Ron. That's some big... I can honestly, genuinely say that if I was even anywhere near this situation, there's no way in hell I would go to some fucking random-ass dude's house. I'd sleep in my car or on the ground. Or I would bunk inside Kenny's port before I would do this. Seemed, Seemed out, out of place. place. Okay. So anyway, fast forward. We're all getting ready for bed. And my mom hears a knock on the door. And it's that guy. He said he just wanted to check to make sure we got all settled in. Cool. Nice thing to do, I guess. Then about 30 minutes later, he comes back to check in again. At this point, my mom was like, thanks, we're good. We'll stop by in the house in the morning to say thank you, etc. Fast forward another 30 to 45 minutes. I can't sleep. I'm terrified. We hear this rustling, which is odd because the guest house was nowhere near any trees or even close proximity to bushes that might cause such a noise. At this point, I see my mom wide awake, look up out the window, like motioning towards the window with her eyes. Let me add, none of the windows had curtains. The guy said it's because his wife was in the process of redecorating. When I looked up there, there was a male figure just standing. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I don't know how long he was standing there for. When he walked away, my mom waited a bit and told us to get our stuff together. She wasn't messing around. 
We had my dad on the phone at this point. He was pretty much flipping out that my mom about... No. We had my dad on the phone at this point. He was pretty much flipping out at my mom about something, but I didn't hear what. My mom said she was going to go put the stuff in the car and to follow her out. This was all around 2 a.m. When we got into the car, we pulled around to the front of the main house. So my mom could return to the key and say thanks and just get out of there. However, when we got to the front, all the lights were off. Not just all the lights, but it looked like no one had been home. Porch light, table lamp in the front windows, everything black. Also, the two cars were gone. The locals' cars, which we had presumed to be his wife's car. Wait, what? Also, the two cars were gone, and which we had presumed to be his wife's car. After seeing this, my mom at this point was pretty unsettled. She said that we were just going to leave and proceeded to drive to the gate. The gate at the end of the driveway had been deadbolted and padlocked shut from the inside. It wasn't a super strong gate, so my dad just told her to rev it. Thankfully, we were in a big SUV and just got out of there. We drove straight back to New York City, not speaking the entire time, and we have never returned back to Maine. My parents still refuse to speak about it to this day. I ended up asking a family member about it one night, when he was drunk, and he said, Oh, they didn't tell you? The actual owners of that house were on vacation. I'm assuming my mom or dad followed up with one of the local authorities and figured that out, but never told us that. I don't know who that man was, or what he was planning that evening. I was curious as of whether I was curious as to whether there were any other new what? I'm just gonna go back. I was cur- <clears throat> he was planning that evening. Where did that go? Oh, there it is. I was curious as to whether there were any known serial killers or murderers who were in that area at the time, whether traveling through or whatever. I guess I didn't really need to hit that at the end. (laughs) Okay. Sounds goof to me. Oh, Derek Webb slinging Sleb Webster and Inner Scare Sleep. Oh, dang. The whole gang, Scooby-Doo and the whole gang's here. Oh, and Interscare Wifey here's too. What it do? What it do? As a husband and father, if my said she was going to stay at some guy's house she just met in town. No, no, hell no. <laughs> that's why that's why a lot of these stories like that I read on here and put on my channel make no damn sense because Half the time I'm in any of these situations, I don't either A, the story's probably fake, or B, people are just fucking stupid. Like, how can none of these red flags or any of this stuff stick out to you to the point where, like, if you're dumb enough to go sleep at some random random dude's house that offers that to you that you don't know, then it's on you at that point. Amy... I'm surprised at you, but actually not surprised at the same time. You know, that sounds like it's such an Amy thing to do. If they if they say, hey, I'm surprised it wasn't like, uh, you know, would have made that story even better is if the guy like the guy that came to check on them like hey you guys good and they say yeah we're good okay and then he just stood outside of the door with a pot of mac and cheese and just sat there and stirred it for the next you know 15 20 30 minutes to see if they get kind of any kind of reaction you know to it actually every time i click the pin one more comment goes on some one of my videos saying that they've heard these stories before. So here you go. There's another 10. (laughs) 
Oh, so funny. So funny. <clears throat> I've heard these stories before. These stories aren't scary. <clears throat> Dude, why are you stealing Mr. Nightmare's content, bro? It's fucking not cool, man. It's not cool. I'm telling on you. I'm telling Mr. Nightmare that you stole his stories, brother. Um... Yeah, another, another one here. No, let's do. Sort top, top of the morning to you, laddie. Look for, looking for a strong. Oh boy, that's a long one. That one's so long. Holy cannoli. Blindy Bear, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Tom Anderson, Hank Hill impressions. I could do it, but it's probably not going to be good. Yeah, I know. It's 99% of the comments I get are like all positive and are awesome. And I love each and every one of you for guys for doing that. Like, I really appreciate it. But then at first I used to take it like seriously personal. And now I just have fun with it and respond back with what I've spent 33, 33 years mastering, which is sarcasm. And I always find a good way to do it. Just to, you know, poke the bear. Because, yeah, I'm like, if these stories aren't scary, or if you heard these stories before, then why are you listening, bud? Like, why are you listening? Just just go, you know, go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. How. You just can't win. You can't win with everybody. There's always going to be somebody that's going to be upset, regardless. And, yeah. Yep. 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 Is this a vacation, or is this... No, I don't know. This... I don't know if this qualifies as a vacation story. Yep, I've read that one before. Don't want to do that one. Um, wait. Okay, okay, there we go. <laughs> Haiti hatching in. Two miles. Everyone knows Hank Hill, but Tom Anderson, the OG character. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. The clicks are coming from inside the house. I guess it, it would would a school would a school school vacation like a summer vacation winter Christmas vacation does that count as a travel and vacation stories do you think does that fall under that umbrella because that's what this is Um, they're talking about how, like, and I also, I think I've said this before, whenever I read somebody's story and they go into like super detail and start like legitimately, I know we talked, I think me, Derek and uh, Rocky talked about this one time. I legitimately will black out. And that's when I like make all kinds of mistakes or just don't even remember. Like I just go completely black out when you start describing your house and the blueprints of a house. I'm just like, ah. 
And half the time it always like leads with this is important to the story, I promise. And it's it's never important to the story. You don't need that much that much detail about your freaking L shaped hallway with a T shaped butthole, you know? Okay, I'm just going to read this one. And if somebody complains, then so be it. All right. So I live in a T-shaped house with an L-shaped roof and an X-shaped backyard. And if you, when you walk into my house and you take a sharp right and then you follow it all the way down the S shaped hallway and you go into my kitchen and you open up the first drawer on your right hand side and then you open up that drawer, the drawer of that drawer and then you turn the butter knife slightly to the right and then once that butter knife is slightly turned to the right, then you lift up the piggy bank that's located immediately underneath it. You take out two pennies five quarters, six nickels, and ten dimes. And then you put all of those into the cracks and crevices of my house. And I promise you, this is all important to the story. It'll be stuff like that. You know. Oh, oof. I need to go get more water. But I'll read the story, then I'll go get more water. Where are the pennies in relation to the quarters? Where are the pennies located next to the quarters? They're located next to the hind quarters. Left or right, whichever one you want. No. Okay. Nope. This is a root beer free zone. No beer, no roots. Com you, well, you can have a beer or you can have roots, but you can't combine them. Root beer free zone. You can have as much cream soda as you want. No root beer though. That's that's just the rules. It it says so before you click in. Before you clicked on this YouTube video, I know it said that it gave you a, like a pre warning or precursor. Letting you know. All right. You want to read another story? Or do you want to just talk about hindquarters and stuff, you know? Okay, there it is. Stoop kids afraid to leave the stoop. Okay, so right now we got 10, 16, 20. Um, that's, that's enough, I guess. I don't know. All right, here we go. <clears throat> the guy that when I was in high school... For the record, I'm a female, and I'm turning 19 this year, and the story happened when I was around 15. Also, I'm from France, which can explain why my English mistakes, if there is any. When I was 15 years old, I had just gotten into my junior year, and I created my first Twitter account that I deleted because of this story. For some information, I didn't tell anyone my username, neither my family nor my friends because I didn't really have any. My profile picture was an avatar so there's no pictures of me on that account. And as location, I said Paris because I lived in the suburbs. I didn't have many followers, 20 or maybe 30. I didn't know that many people, so it's not really that interesting. One evening in October, someone sent me this quite strange direct message. It was someone with 200 followers on this account, and the message said, Hi, my name is Rob. I just turned 17 and wanted to know if you lived in the area because I'll soon be moving in, 
and go to the town high school. I'm looking for friends. I immediately thought that something was wrong because there was nowhere on my profile that said where I actually lived. But after I spent some time thinking, I remembered of a tweet I'd made weeks ago about buses and I mentioned the city. So I told myself that he looked up the town and just found my tweet. His age wasn't shocking because I'm two years ahead of my classmates. I was bored and he was polite. So I answered him and I told him that I did leave in that town and go to that high school. The discussion was natural. We talked a lot that night, mainly about high school and about the food at the cafeteria, about the teachers, that kind of thing. It was getting very late, though, and he tried to interpose some personal questions like, do you live far away from the school? Are you in a house or an apartment? Do you live with both parents? There's five of you. You're not often home alone. I answered most of these because it was way too shady for me. Wait, no. I never answered because it was way too shady for me, and unfortunately, he didn't insist. Unfortunately, because if he did, I would have probably blocked him. The next day, the same thing. We talked a lot, and he was still asking personal questions to get to know me better. So I am... Whoa. Whoa. Let's start that over, because that's worded weird. Worded weird. Wait, no. no. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, because if you did... All right, Peter. Next day. The next day. YouTuber channel people should be called Pied Pipers. How about... No, you can come up with something better than that. And uh, if you guys just want to drink root beer, that's fine. But the only thing that goes good with root beer is stirring macaroni and cheese. So you have to live with that. That was a hell of a combination. Or actually know what... If you, okay, instead, when you're making the macaroni and cheese on the stove, don't put milk in it. Put root beer in it. Okay? Put root beer in the mac and cheese and then go. That's, that's a good one. That's some ASMR stuff. Somebody should, one of you stop what you're doing right now. Go uh, make some macaroni and cheese, put some root beer in it and stir it. And then just put that on loop and put it on like an ASMR channel. I'm sure it'll get millions of views. Especially from Amy alone. Unfortunately, because if he did, I would have probably blocked him. Alright, that's where I was. The next day, same thing. We talked a lot. He was still asking all kinds of personal questions to quote-unquote get to know me better. So I ended up asking some too. And he always seemed to answer with what seemed like honesty. I still didn't know the answers to questions about my house though. Because he definitely didn't need to know anything about that. It lasted two or three weeks, but it was enough time for me to develop feelings for him. He was handsome, super kind, and it was everything that I needed because I was bullied for years. And still today. I develop a strong feelings, but wait, no. He was handsome, super kind, and it was everything that I needed because I've been bullied for years. And even today, I still develop strong feelings, but mostly blind trust in people who are just friendly to me. In France in October, we have two weeks long vacation. And the day before back to school, he finally told me he was coming to my neighborhood because he finally moved in with his mom and he asked me a place to meet during the morning break. I was so happy and relieved to finally be able to meet him, and told him to just join me in the hall. But when he understood that there would be people around, he said he would prefer to be in an isolated place, because he was afraid he would get rescued. Whoa, whoa, what the, what, what the? Join me in the, in the hall. hall. In the hall. 
but <sighs> oh my goodness. Are you just learning? Are you just learning? I told, I told him, him to, to just join, join me, me in the hall. hall. Told him to just join me in the hall. But when he understood that there would be people around, okay, that's where I need to be. Pita. But when he understood that there would be people around, he said he would prefer to be in an isolated place because he was afraid that he would not get recognized. What? That's weird. It's so weird. And it throws me off every time. And, and told, told him, him to, to just join me in the, in the hall. hall. But when he understood that there would be people around, he said he would prefer to be in an isolated place. He would prefer an isolated place because he was afraid he would not recognize. Oh, that's what keeps throwing me. Right there. Right there, mate. <laughs> I'm going to start a poll, okay? Awful. Tasty. There you go. Enjoy. You enjoy that. <clears throat> Where are we? I'm going to read this story and you guys vote, okay? Okay, children, you guys vote and we'll get back and then maybe we'll have snack time. And, and told, told him, him to just join me in the hall. hall. But maybe you will have to take a nap first, okay? And I lost my place. I lost me place. But when? Okay, there we go. There we are. <laughs> I don't like the fact that Tasty is winning. Join me in the hall. Join me in the hall. But when he understood that there would be people around us, he said he would prefer to meet in an isolated place because he was afraid he would not recognize me and didn't want to spend the break looking for me. It was a good enough excuse for me, so I told him to meet me in the third floor bathroom because we weren't allowed to stay there during the breaks, and no one would disturb us. In my head, even though it was a little creepy, I was still in school, so nothing could happen to me. Next day, back to school day. I made myself pretty. I wore my best clothes. I counted down the minutes, and finally, when break time arrived, I ran to the bathroom and waited. When he arrived, it was him. He was not a catfish. He looked quite like his profile picture. But I noticed that he had seemed a lot older than he told me. I thought 20 years old instead of 17. We talked a lot. We got along well, and I was so pleased. And at the end of the break, he asked me to go to the fast food chain with him, just for lunch. I said no because I didn't have any money, and I always refused for people to pay for me. It's just out of principle. He seemed disappointed but offered to walk me home after classes. I explained I have to take the bus, but that he could walk me to the bus stop. He looked disappointed again, but finally accepted this. And that's exactly what happened. It was so great that it quickly became some sort of routine. We would meet in the third floor bathroom during morning break, and he would walk me to the bus stop after classes. Big surprising fact, I never saw him in the hallways, nor at the cafeteria, but I thought at the time that the building was huge. There was over 1,500 students in here, so if our schedules didn't coincide, there's no way we couldn't meet each other. This little game lasted until December, so almost a month and a half. The 14th of December, whoa. The 14th of December, a Thursday, I complained about how lonely I was going to be that evening because my dad was abroad for work. My brother was always at his friend's house. 
and my little sister was on a school trip, and my mother had to work very late that night. It was very reckless of me, but after weeks, I thought I could trust him. That evening, he walked me to the bus stop. We both waited. I got in the bus, waved at him, and put on my earphones. I had two stops to form a house, and it was about 1745 in December, so it was already really dark outside. And as I got on the bus, I just had this really bad feeling. <coughs> I just, I just had, had this really, really bad feeling. Um, hang on. I gotta put that there, and I gotta go get more water. My... Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper is not the best. Dr. Pepper is okay. I'm a Pepsi. Who is this Dr. Pepper? No doctor. No doctor, no pepper. I like, if I have a go-to soda, soda pop, it's like cherry Coke or grape soda or orange soda or cream soda. The good kinds. You know, hold on. I'll be right back. I got to go. I got to get it water. And we're going to just listen to me cough for the next however many minutes. And that's not fun to listen to, now is it? If you would like to take the heart with you, please make your way try. What does that what does that even mean? All right, be right back. All right. All right. No creed. I will blast creed. I will ask blast creed if I need to. Shit. It's, it's, you like the plain old dressing ranch and Owen soda? Not very... I mean, I like, I like to mix stuff with ranch, preferably, like put like buffalo sauce or hot sauce with the ranch, you know, swish it around like that. Yeah, I do like to do that. And orange soda, like orange soda isn't my favorite, but I do enjoy an occasional orange soda. I do like, if you ask me, cherry Coke or any kind of cherry, anything is probably going to be number one. All right, where where in the same heck were we on this story? It's very and a really bad feeling, right? I got on the bus. bus. I, I just, just had, had this really, really bad, bad feeling. feeling. No, 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 bad, bad feeling. feeling. I need to do that. How I would like to have the water fountain in Mr. Deeds when he has Hawaiian punch. That's pretty awesome. Cherry Dr. Pepper. I don't think I have. I've tried the cream soda Dr. Pepper. And that was pretty good. Dr. Pepper. Pepper. Dr. Pepper and whiskey. I'll definitely give that a try. 
Yeah, I'd like to try that too. That sounds nice and bubbly. All right, let me get back to the story. Y'all, it's it's too easy to get lost in the in the chit chat. It's, it's a really, really bad, bad feeling. feeling. And mm, hmm. There was that very uncomfortable sensation on my stomach, and I felt like I was being observed. I pressed pause on my music, but kept my earphones on so that people thought I couldn't hear anything. And I think that's what probably saved my life. I live in a suburban neighborhood, very silent, especially at night, with no visibility on the big road the bus passed in. I heard footsteps behind me and understood why I was right. There was definitely someone following me. And he was not well intentioned. At least I could hear that was what the wait, what? At least I could hear that was not accelerating. So he was not trying to catch up to me. But I couldn't guess how long it would last. As quietly as possible, I reached for my keys in my pocket, and when I finally pulled them out, I ran. I ran as fast as I could. Best sprint of my life. I don't know how it worked, but I managed to open up and close the door before he could reach me. I then deactivated my alarm, which, by the way, confirmed that I was home alone. Then I took a look through the gas panel. Gas panel. Then I took a look through the glass panel on the door. It's not a peephole. It's a whole window. So if someone's wanted to see what was happening inside, they definitely could. It was Rob a few meters away looking at me with a really creepy face. He had followed me to my home, probably with a car, and he was clearly not here for chit-chat. I still don't know why I didn't call the police. I was just totally paralyzed. We both stared at one another for a minute. When I took back control over my body, I ran into the kitchen to get a knife and then got to the back door. He was there too, banging on the door. I feared for a few seconds that the glass would break, but thankfully that didn't happen. That moment, when I was pushing against the door and praying for it not to break, all the while he was kicking lar- all the while he was kicking harder and harder, was the longest that I've ever experienced. After maybe five minutes, he stopped and got around the house, knocking against every shutter, and then got back to the front door. He looked very angry. But then, my neighbor's car reached my house, and Rob quickly ran away, probably thinking it was my mother coming home. Back on Twitter the following day, Rob sent me thousands of messages before I could block him. He then deleted his account. I thought I was done with the story. I really did. But quickly after, some accounts which have just been created then followed me. All of their ads were series of numbers and the first letter of his name. As soon as I blocked one, another one would follow me. I just chose to delete my account because I couldn't make it stop. It was much too hard to endure because they were sending me dozens of insulting DMs. Later, I talked to the people who were supposed to be Rob's classmates because I haven't met... No, that's not. Later, I talked to the people who were supposedly Rob's classmates because I haven't met any in days but not a single one had ever even heard about Rob. This guy was never a student in my... This guy was never a student in my high school. That is why I never met him apart from our daily meetings, and that's probably why he seems so old. I never heard about him anymore, and I'm still asking myself what did he want, and what could have happened that night if he got inside. Okay, it's 10, 20, 30, something like 40, 40 minutes or so. All right, paper. Please, um, please do not harass my ghost. You don't want to see what's underneath that cloak. Um. 
Peaky. Peaky Blinders. All right, that guy was... That guy when I was in high school. Oh. Duh. 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 Let's see. Back travel. Oof, 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 oof. Let's do travel stories six. Is it six now? Yeah, six. All right. <clears throat> Hold on one moment, please, please. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Sherry, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. It's been fun. It's been real fun. I can change... You know what? I can change this S. Real quick like. About if you eat the same. Let's do this one. <clears throat> All right, ready for another story. Ready for another story, love? Please. No. Yeah, um, the ghost disappeared and actually talked to me and said that he felt very uncomfortable with people trying to look up his sheet, so asked me to change the background. So that's exactly what I did. Where did that go? Okay, there it is. Okay. Oh, a strangeness. Let's see. That one, yes. Top. Top. Um, where, where, where'd that go? Okay, there we go. I think I'm almost positive that I've read this story before, but it's been like, yeah, I'm almost positive I have. It was like at least a year ago, at least. And I don't even think I read it. I think somebody else read it. So, okay. All right. Coming in hot. <clears throat> I used to work on the north slope of Alaska. Here's one of my stories. I used to work on the north slope of Alaska in the oil industry. The work we were doing required us to travel far out into the Alaskan Petroleum Reserve, which is basically just untamed tundra wilderness for hundreds and hundreds of miles. The oil company would build these long ice roads in the winter that would lead to exploration... Oh. The oil companies would build these long, icy roads in the winter that would lead to drilling pads. Our job was to go out after they finished the initial drilling and test rock formations for their oil-producing qualities. It was mid-January. The sun hadn't come quite up yet. And when I say the sun hadn't come up, I mean in almost a month and a half. 
Polar nights are intense. The particular well site that we are driving... The particular well site that we were traveling to was about 60 miles west of Alpine, Alaska, deep inside the wilderness. Our job took a week, but we finished and we were headed back to the camp to finish our hitch and just go home. At the beginning and end of the icy roads are guard shacks that you have to check in and out for safety. There's no cell reception and radios work only up to a distance. If you don't check in or out at a set time, they come looking for you to ensure that you're not a popsicle. It was about four in the morning. Not that it mattered in light of endless night. It was about four in the morning. Not that it really mattered in the land of endless night. And we were halfway across the ice road. Travel was slow, as the speed limit on the roads is only 25 miles per hour. When something appeared on the road in our headlights. Uh, hold on a second. Is that? Um, I wonder what kind of popsicle. Probably the good kind. The best kind. Um. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> I got distracted. It was a man, in jeans, sneakers, and a hoodie jacket, walking down an ice road in wilderness tundra at 4 a.m., and it was negative 20 degrees outside. It's not unusual for the local Inuit people to be out this far hunting. Maybe his snowmobile broke down, and he's trying to get back to the guard shack. It seemed plausible. He did acknowledge us as our truck rolled up next to him. He just kept shuffling forward. He didn't seem cold. His clothing, while totally not appropriate for this extreme weather, appeared warm and dry. We also noticed he wasn't Inuit, but Caucasian. I rolled down my window and asked if he needed any help and if he was okay. He didn't acknowledge us, just kept shuffling forward. His face was completely blank, devoid of any thought or emotion. The other guys in my truck suggested that maybe he was in an accident and it is just... The other guys in my truck suggested that maybe he was in an accident and is still in shock. I continued rolling my truck alongside him as he trudged down the road, still trying to get his attention. But in this extreme cold, I would occasionally get whiffs of a peculiar smell coming off of him. He smelled acidic, if that makes any sense. There was just a lot about this guy that made the hair on my neck stand up. The guy behind me in the truck's crew cab had enough of all this. He rolled down his window and reached out to grab the guy. He later said that he was going to try and shake him out of this stupor. Before my buddy's hand could reach him, though, this walking popsicle spun around and latched onto my buddy's outstretched arm. He glared at my buddy, and then at me with this look of pure rage, not removing his hand from his arm. If emotions had a physical temperature, this guy could have melted the entire tundra that night. My buddy groaned out in pain as if he was trying to get his arm free from Mr. Popsicle. At that moment, this guy just starts screaming in our faces. There was so much hate and rage and anger in that scream. It was absolutely terrifying. I slammed on the gas and spun out on the ice for a second before the wheels caught and launched us forward. Popsicle dude still had a hold of my buddy's arm and was trying to pull him out of the truck. He was running alongside the truck while the other guys in the cab held onto my buddy's arm to keep him inside. After several moments, it could have only been a few seconds at the most, my buddy tore free from this guy and we hauled ass into the guard shack another thou- After several moments, I still can't talk. Hold... My buddy, my buddy tore, tore free, free from, from the sky, sky and we hauled ass, ass into the guard shack, shack another thought. Could, could have only been a few seconds. seconds of, after, after, se after several moments. Grape is the best popsicle. 
No question. Yeah, I'm getting hungry too. If anybody wants to make a Taco Bell run and drop me off something, that'd be great. <clears throat> I'd appreciate it. Even though I ate dinner like a few hours ago. I'm hungry, hungry. All right, after several moments, <clears throat> my buddy's, buddy's arm. arm. Keep, Keep him, him inside. inside. After several moments, it could have been an only few seconds at the most, my buddy tore free from this guy, and we hauled ass to the guard shack another 30 miles down the road. We checked in with the guards and reported what we'd just seen. The guard was looking at us like we were pulling some sort of prank. But the policy said they had to check it out regardless. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm scared the piss out of me. Piss. Some, Some sort, sort of prank. prank. Some sort of prank. The guard was looking at us. We, we checked, checked in, in with the guards, guards and, and reported what, what we just, just seen. seen. You've never eaten Taco Bell. Who are you? What's wrong with you? What the hell's wrong with you? You are missing out. That's the best fast food that it's just the best fast food. No other one's better. Don't care. You can argue, not argue, but you can tell me differently, but you're just, it's okay to be wrong. T-Bell for life. I don't really eat fast food that much anymore, but when I do, when I break my healthy food, it's always Taco Bell. Always. Um... We checked, we checked in, in with, with the guards, guards and reported what, what we just seen. seen. What we just seen right there. The guard was looking at us like we were pump. Oh, no. Just just seen. Seen. <laughs> the guard was looking at us like we were pulling some sort of prank, but the policy stated they had to check it out regardless. Oh my gosh, I didn't press record. We, we checked, checked in with what, what we just seen. seen. Knew it. Oh, hold on, there's a freaking train. Oh my, oh my goodness. And Babes Mariba, damn right. <clears throat> hey, your gravy train. Okay, we, we just, just seen. seen. Back to this. Let me finish this freaking story before I get distracted again. The guard was looking at us like we were pulling some sort of prank, but the policy stated they had to check it out regardless. My buddy's arm was sore, and when he pulled back his sleeve, there were noticeable bruises in the shape of a hand around his arm. We filed a report with the guard and were told to head back to our camp. None of us really wanted to talk about what happened. And it was a quiet drive the west and it was a quiet drive the rest of the way. We ended up flowing no. We flew home the next day as well. The next time we saw that guard at his shack, we asked him if we ever saw Mr. Papa. <laughs> what? what? We flew, flew home, home the next, next day, day as well. well. Oh, God. The next time we saw the guard at his shack, we asked him if he ever saw Mr. Popsicle on his patrols. He told us they searched up and down that ice road for a solid 12-hour shift. Saw nothing. Not even tracks in the snow leading off the road. He told us it was a good prank, and he'd for sure be getting us back for him, making... He told us it was a good prank, and he'd be getting us back for making him waste a shift driving around. But it wasn't a prank. Who would even make up a story like that? Who would willingly bruise their arm for a dumb prank? We never got a satisfying answer to what happened that evening, and I still wonder about that dude, if it even was a dude. The Alaskan Tundra is a weird place, and that was just one of my many weird stories from my time up there. 
I'll work to write one. I'll work to write down more of my experiences and share them to the appropriate subs. All right, so let's take a quick three, six. 12, 18, 28, 48. Okay. That's not how you say it. That's not how you freaking say it. Hey, baby. All right. That was a good one. I really like that story. I really like the part where it talked about popsicles. Popsicles. I wish they would have kept the dipping saw tip, dipping taco. What's a dip? What's a dipping taco? I like their protein. I guess they're called. I don't know if they're called protein bowls, but they have like a chicken, a steak, and it's just a big bowl of stuff that you can just mow down on. It's d de delicious, de delicious, so tasty. <clears throat> All right. Nope, 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 nope. All right, we need a couple, couple more here. No, not that one. Are these the, is this the oh yeah okay never mind I've read that one taco dipping is that like teabagging yes yes it's exactly like that <laughs> exactly like that no difference whatsoever Hold on, trying to find that other story. All right. All right. This is probably going to be the last one. It was a soft taco with shredded beef and creamy. Ooh. Creamy jalapeno sauce with cheese on tiny. That sounds freaking delicious. That sounds good. That sounds really good. I would eat that. Unfortunately, the root beer pole didn't go the way I wanted it to. Y'all seem to like it for some unknown freaking reason. Is that mold? Mold? All right. Story travel. Travel. All right, we're in, I'm ending that poll. No more polls. Yeah, I know you're going to say w victory or something, Amy. No, it tastes better than root beer. It's victory or winning or... <laughs> or it... They learn heart. I don't know. What, what tastes better than root beer? Victory, winning... Cheesy soft tacos with shredded beef and creamy jalapeno sauce with cheese on the outside and grilled nacho and chalita sauce over dipping. Is that what tastes better than root beer? Perhaps. Hold on, there's another freaking train. So as soon as this train gets done, I'll read another story. It's probably going to be the last one. 
<laughs> no more polls about root beer. Didn't go my way. And it's not fun to lose. The last story we're going to change. I, I might cry about it. I just freaking might cry. Brewderoni is better though. Hell yeah. I want I want some root beer flavored macaroni. Boy I can too just sit here and cry. Sit here and cry, just sit here and cry. I don't know which one is faster. All right. Uh, the only the only thing I do like root beer, I do like root beer floats. I think I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Root beer floats are good. Especially when you get them in a frosted mug. Oh, the stupid train's almost gone. <sighs> That's good because old man booze is starting to get sleepy anyway. It's way past me bedtime nights. I'll go to sleep real early around here. Nope, 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 nope. Not with freaking 99. No, no. No, wait, did you mean 90? Is there a brew beer called 99, or is it, did you mean 99% root beer? With, because I like to fill it full of freaking ice cream and then sprinkle dinkle some root beer on top. Wait, hold on. Hold the phone. Where did that go? Engage, engage. Engage with your audience. Start a Q&A. Answer viewer questions live. Start a viewer's poll. All right, one more poll during the story. And then, wait, no, 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 I'm not going to do another poll. I'm not doing that. 99 alcoholic root beer. I don't think I've ever seen that, but I'm interested now. I would definitely try that. <laughs> afraid, afraid of what? Afraid of what? What am I afraid of? Fucking stupid. Go back to your master backyard. <laughs> I'm not scared. I'll try it. I'll try it right now. Fucking buy me a bottle, buy me a case and send it my way. I'll try it right now. I'll try it live on air. Live on air. All right, you ready for this last and final story? It's a good one. At least I think it is. Fingers crossed. I hope so. Sit down. Why are you shaking in your boots? What, was it the root beer? Yeah, it was the root beer. That scared me. Now I have root beer in my boots because that's why I'm shaking. I'm shaking. I'm actually shaking. I have two root beers in my hand. They're shaking and it's falling into my boots.
All right. <clears throat> Sir, sir, with beat or okay. That's not root beer in your boots. These boots were made for walking. That's really what it is. All right, last and final story there. Okay. And all right, Peter. My family loves to go on vacation in Sweden, and my grandmother even has a cottage in the forest that all family members can use if they want. A couple of years ago, when I was around 20, I was on vacation there with my mom and grandma, sometime in autumn for about 10 days. This is the Swedish backwoods. We go there to unwind, to enjoy nature and to take a rest from civil to enjoy nature and take a rest from civilization. Hiking, canoeing, foraging for mushrooms, sitting around the fireplace in the evening, that sort of thing. It's not completely isolated. You can find some villages and fields here and there, but it's definitely very rural, even though you don't have to encounter any people if you don't want to. Now, I've always liked to go exploring on my own, finding new paths through the woods, fixing our old maps to better reflect the current landscape. The maps you can buy of this area haven't been updated in ages, and many paths don't even exist anymore because nature has swallowed them a long time ago. What I really like is exploring abandoned buildings, and rural Sweden is really great for that. Back in the 1800s, Swedish people in their countryside were dirt poor and starving, so many moved to the new world in search of a better life. You can still find the foundations of old farmhouses, even the foundations of entire small villages in the woods, sometimes with rusted 100-plus-year-old farm equipment. Also, like many other countries, Sweden has an issue with rural exodus nowadays. Middle-aged and younger people move away to the cities. Old people stay until they die, and nobody buys the house, and it just sits there, abandoned. This happens a lot. You can find many empty houses in the forest, and I just love sneaking around in them. Most of them have already been looted, presumably by hunters, loggers, or other hikers. But you sometimes... But sometimes, you can still find interesting things, and I like not having to worry about being seen, because it's so rare to meet anyone out in those woods. Fix that right there real quick. In those, those woods. woods. So one crisp autumn day. <clears throat> on these days, these, these roots are going to walk all over you. I know. Hang on. Now take a water. Take a drink of water. It's so cold, sir. Won't you spare a penny for me and my little brother? Fucking cold, mate. Give me a fucking coat. What in the? What in the? All right. <clears throat> anyone, anyone out in those woods? woods? Anyone out in those woods? <clears throat> so one crisp autumn day, I took one of our bicycles, a map, and a GPS. Mostly just not a thing out there. No, that doesn't make any sense. So one crisp autumn day, I took one of our bicycles and a map. GPS is not really a thing out there. My phone. And something to eat and drink. I told my mom and grandma I wanted to be back by nightfall at the latest, and then just set out to explore. On the map, I had chosen a wide loop that I guessed would take about three hours if paths were clear. And if I didn't stop to explore. But even if I did... I guess that I still had plenty of time until dusk. I had a lot of fun at first. Driving the mountain... Whoa. I had a lot of fun at first. Driving the mountain bike down smaller and smaller forest paths. Finding some old foundations of old buildings. 
and some root cellars that were still intact and some mushrooms. I had some problems with the map though, because like I said, many paths that are still on the map don't exist anymore. So I had to turn back a few times, but mostly I had a pretty good idea of where I was. Of course, I made that of course, that made it all take longer than I anticipated. When I reached the furthest point of the loop and turned into a narrow path that, according to the map, would take me back an hour, the sun was already pretty low in the sky at this point, too. I started feeling a bit uneasy. I have to admit, because of my bad time management, I was worried that I couldn't trust the map even less than I thought now. Also, shortly before turning onto that path, I'd found some traps in the woods that kind of creeped me out. There were these three big cages, each with a platform in the middle that was connected to a steel door on the front. On those platforms were small animal remains, rotten black with little bones sticking out, bait that hadn't been touched. I had a stick and de I took a stick and deactivated the traps by pushing onto the platform through the cage bars. When those doors had snapped shut, it had been so loud that I'd flinched and afterwards, I noticed how quiet it really had become. Now I was clumsily cycling all over that uneven ground, and the sun was now setting. I had this uncomfortable feeling that everything around me was sort of aware, if that makes any sense. It wasn't the feeling of being watched, not quite yet. It just felt like I had to try and be quiet somehow. After a while, I came upon a crossroad in a more open area where I was supposed to follow the path straight on. The trees were not so high here, and I guess this had been one of the clearings created by a severe storm ten years back. At the crossroads was a tiny wooden building, somewhere between a shed and a cabin. I had originally set out to find abandoned houses, and so far, I would only seen a couple of stone foundations and a roof cellar. So even though at this point I really should have hurried to get back, curiosity got the better of me. I wanted to check this thing out. I wanted to check if this thing was locked and see if I could take a peek inside. It wasn't locked, but the door was kind of stuck in the frame. And for a moment, I could thought I could tear it loose. Oh, that doesn't make any sense either. That's weirdly written. I could I thought, thought I could... And for a... But the, the door, door was kind of stuck, stuck in the frame. frame. Or was kind of stuck in the frame. No, let's start it. It was locked. It, it wasn't. wasn't. I, wanted I wanted to check, check if this thing. thing... <laughs> Aaron, thanks for stopping by. Go get some herbies. Um. Make sure you. Take just pack it on top of a packet of Arby sauce and just rip it open and just drop it into your mouth and don't eat anything else with it. It's the best thing to do with that stuff. I, I wanted, wanted to check, check if this, this thing, thing was locked, locked inside. inside. <clears throat> it was locked and inside. Okay. It wasn't locked, but the door was kind of stuck in the frame. Inside the cabin was a cot, a tiny oven, and a bigger mass of taxidermy animals that I could have thought would fit into the small thing. They were even on the cot and on the oven, and they nailed to the ceiling and the walls. And the entire inside of the cabin, almost every inch of it, was just covered in layer after layer of black mold. It was so much that some of the animals you couldn't tell. It was so much that with some of the animals you couldn't tell anymore what they'd been once. With others, I could only guess from the shape. They all looked monstrous, covered in that stuff, and the smell of rot and mold was overwhelming. I quickly tried to close the door again, but the wood had warped so much that it wasn't possible, so I just left it hanging slightly open and just got out of there. Already as I was cycling away from the cabin, I felt strange. This time I did feel like I was being watched. I was nonsensically thinking, you should have closed the door, you should have closed the door. I don't know why I thought that, but it made me uneasy to think that this shed was now open. I told myself, you're just being silly, because why the hell would it matter? 
Obviously, no one was using that cabin anymore. Maybe ten minutes later, the path entered a stretch of older woods with much higher trees. The sun was now close to the horizon, and the sky was full of orange light. Under the fir trees, it was already getting very dark. I checked my phone to maybe tell my mom that I might be late, but of course, I still had no reception. A couple of more minutes into the dark forest, the path disappeared. At this point, I only had two options. Try to push through with my bike until I met a logging road that was hopefully on the other side of the stretch of the woods and could take me back. Or return, go past the mold shed again, and then try to get back the way I'd come. Basically, the second option was not an option for me. As I already said, I kind of had to zigzag and improvise to even come this far because the map was wrong in so many places. Going back all the way would take ages. I could get turned around in the dark and easily lose my way. But also, and really, I didn't want to go past that shed again. I just had this sudden aversion to even look behind me. As dusk was creeping through the forest, I was getting properly paranoid at this point, and the uneasy feeling crystallized into the idea that I disturbed something inside there, and that because I left the door open, something had now come out of the shed and was following me. I knew the whole thing was stupid, but I couldn't shake that feeling. Going past the shed, past those traps, and then through the ruins of that old village, past the open mouth of the roost cellar, in the dark, and getting lost out there with the feeling of something possibly on my trail, no way was I going back that way. Yes, I might even get lost trying to go through those woods in front of me. I would have to push and maybe even carry my bike but the woods didn't seem to stretch too far in front of me, only left and right, so it seemed like the only option. I was just hoping at this point that the supposed logging road was on the other side and was still there. <clears throat> was, was on, on the, the other, other side and was still there. there. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Seemed, seemed like, like the, the only option. option. Seemed like the only option. All right, hold on. Violet, welcome. Welcome. Yes, it's a it's a clicker. I'll have I'll have babes tell you all about it because she she has no problem. And I'm gonna finish the story. <clears throat> so, so it, it seemed, seemed like, like the, the only option. option. So it seemed like the only option. I was just hoping at this point that the supposed logging road on the other side was still there. After tearing through brambles for a bit, I found what I guessed might be the remnants of the old path, because the ground was sort of lower there. I tried to follow that until I came upon another set of ruins. Again, the foundations of some some Again, the foundations of some farmhouse, presumably. Behind that, the ground sloped down into a marsha area. Marsha. Behind that. The ground sloped down into a marshy area and birches that seemed white in the gloom under the trees. At this point, I stopped to listen, but I still didn't want to turn around. I couldn't hear anything, but the ugly feeling of being watched, of being followed, only increased. And at this point, I felt like not only was something coming after me, but like the forest itself was sort of aware of my presence. But like the forest itself, was sort of aware of my presence. Listening, maybe, or watching. Like it was being deliberately quiet. I was feeling so scared that I didn't even try to talk myself out of this feeling anymore. I just accepted that this was what I was dealing with now. I had some leftover food in my backpack. I have a sandwich and some sesame snacks. And then, of course, the mushrooms that I'd found earlier. I took all of it out laid it on a stone on one of the old walls that surrounded the ruins. I said something to the effect of, please let me go, I'm really sorry, I won't come back here, I promise. Just let me go home. Something like that. After that, I grabbed my bike and went down to the swamp, still not looking back. 
Luckily, it turned out it wasn't a large swamp or anything, just a wet patch for about 200 meters until the ground sloped upwards again. Still, it took a while because of the bike, which I had to push and carry by turn, because I really couldn't see anymore. I was constantly stepping into muddy pools and getting stuck. When I emerged on the other side, I was soaked in sweat and my feet were wet. When I emerged on the other side, I was soaked in sweat and my feet were wet and muddy to mid-calf. I still stopped frequently to listen for any sounds behind me, but there was nothing. And then, wouldn't you know it, the trees opened up and there it was, the logging road. I could have cried with joy and relief in that moment. I stepped onto the road and turned back to look behind me, but I couldn't even see the swamp through the trees anymore. It was almost completely dark at this point. Luckily, there was some moonlight, and the light on the bike also worked. I climbed on my bike and pedaled home as fast as I could. About a half an hour later, I even had some cell phone reception for a moment, so I could call my mom and tell her about what happened. Well, I told her I got lost anyway. I didn't want her to know I'd worked myself up into a panic over nothing. Of course, she had been really worried, and the horrible feeling I had deep in those woods eased up gradually. I even heard an owl and saw a deer later. <coughs> uh. I'm going to have to go back to that. Where was I? Worked myself, myself up into a panic, panic over nothing. nothing. Well, well, I told, I told her, her I got lost anyway. anyway. Told her I got lost anyway. I didn't want her to know. Oh, yes. Hello, Violet. I'm here. I'm new here as well. <laughs> you were almost a serial killer, or you were almost killed by a serial killer. Yeah, I know. I need to lay off them smokes. <clears throat> I got, got lost, lost anyway. anyway. I mean, you got my you got my interest, bud. Like, uh, so if you want to if you want to type out. Whatever it is, your story, uh, send it my way. I'm, I'm interested. Anyway, lost anyway. anyway. I didn't want her to know how I'd worked myself up into a panic over nothing. Of course, she'd already been worried, and the horrible feeling I had back there deep in those woods eased up gradually. I even heard an owl and saw a deer later. By the time I arrived back at our cabin, I was finally feeling okay again. Just extremely exhausted. So here's what I think happened. I got worried because I was out in the forest later than I planned. Then got spooked by the ugly sight within the cabin. And at this point, basically drove myself in hysteria. There was nothing... then got spooked by the ugly sight within the cabin, and at this point, basically drove myself into hysteria because of my overactive imagination and my inexperience with the forest at night. There was nothing there that wasn't explain. Oh my god. There was nothing there that wasn't explainable. Even the dead silence was probably a period in between the songbirds going to sleep for the night and the nocturnal animals coming out. All the rest, I think, was just in my head. That's why I think it was a good idea to leave the food as my sacrifice. It's like a placebo, almost. The fantasy solution to a fantasy problem that worked myself... No. It's like a placebo, almost. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christo. Scared the shit out of me again. To a fantasy problem. It's like a placebo.
That's why I think it was a good idea to leave the food as my sacrifice. <clears throat> There you go. Just email or just send it over to my email. If you would, it is my sacrifice. It's like a placebo almost. A fantasy solution to a fantasy problem that worked to calm myself down. But even so, I've never been to that back... But even so, I've never been back to that stretch of woods. And I won't ever go there out again. I can never be 100% sure that there was truly nothing out there. And I don't ever want to have an experience like that again. If there is in fact something not quite right with this area. If there is in fact something not quite right with this area. I don't want to find out what that is. All right. Okay, that's, let me double check this really quick. 16, 28, 38. 40, yeah, okay, that's, that's about an hour. Good enough for who it's for. That's what I always say. All right. What time is it? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect time. Old man booze. You got to go to bed anyway. So I got to get up early. Take the boy to school. All right. I'll put up one last poll. I, you're right. I forgot to pull up, put up this poll. Is this a poll? <clears throat> oh this is this is a good night this is a good night for me when it comes to like messing up like i totally feel joel on that because i've had moments where i can't i don't know why i just can't fucking talk can't speak i'm messing like everything up and i get very very irritated very quickly i promise you all you got to do is start reading and narrating and something so simple as just reading words on a screen is something so extremely simple, but there, there are times where you just can't do it for some reason or you keep fumbling and messing up words and there's nothing more irritating than that. Because there's been quite a few times where I'll start recording and I realize like I have to come back, I have to take a break and just come back and do this later because I can't do this right now. I start messing up and fumbling to, through too many words and yeah, it's it's beyond annoying. <laughs> okay <clears throat> I'm gonna click a song for you and then you have to guess what it is All right, <clears throat> take a freaking guess. Take a wild goose guess. Nope, you don't need a clue. You're you're good at this. What sounds? What sounds better? Kitchen at three AM. Stirring. Yeah. 
and cheese. Repeating. Hold on. More. That's not, that's not how you say that. Okay, one last poll, and I'm getting gonna get off here really soon. <clears throat> um, you all failed. Do you want me to tell you what it was now? Wait, oh shit, babes, you got it. It's it was take me higher. See, can you take me higher to a place where a blind man see? Come on, let's go there. It was, it was, can you take me higher? I know. I should have told you. You're just going to need the edge of your seat, nothing else. <clears throat> Let's go there. Mm -hmm. I live by Creed, but rock. All right, guys. I'm going to go get some more water. I'm going to go night night because it's late. <clears throat> it's late for me. Yeah, you should have guessed. You'll get to know by now. More than likely. It, it's always Creed. Yeah, the Great Popsicle is on its way. It's in the mail. It's heading your way. Don't you worry. Sent, sent you a grape one. I'm sending Amy a root beer popsicle. That has cat hair on it. All right. All right. Thank you all for stopping by, and for real, uh, from now on, every Monday, reading stories live for the previous day. So, all these stories you're going to hear tomorrow on the episode, so hopefully you're okay with listening to these again. Yeah, I got you. I'll send you a green apple one that has whatever's underneath my couch. I'll take the popsicle, and I'll just roll it. From all the stuff that's underneath my couch and send that one to you. All right. All right. I love y'all. For real, I do. And uh, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next Monday. And I'll see you tomorrow for the episode drop. Make sure to complain about something really good in the comment section for me so I can read it and enjoy it. Okay. Sound good. Sounds great. Have a good night. Dream about me. Okay. Sound good? Sounds good. I agree. Okay. Toodaloo. Adios. Until next time.